Welcome to our training on communicating with parents, your privacy partners. My name is Juliana Cotto and I'm a policy fellow for the Youth and Education Privacy at the Future of Privacy Forum. The objectives of this module are to one, understand the importance of building trust and practicing transparency with parents. Two, learn how to communicate the benefits of using student data to help students succeed. And three, identify key messages and best practices for communicating with parents. Remote learning has posed unique and significant challenges to parents who had to quickly adapt to helping their children with online learning while continuing their own jobs and learning remote work for themselves. With online learning also came a number of new technology tools being used by schools to deliver and provide education in an online setting. With the number of news stories on Zoom bombing and having to learn new apps for the kids to use, parents became increasingly concerned about the safety of these tools. This moment has all highlighted the value of being transparent with parents and caregivers. There's a direct relationship between transparency and trust. Parents expect their children's well-being to come first, and this means that they expect schools to make decisions about their children's data so that it has all the proper protections in place. Schools and educators are entrusted with handling sensitive and personally identifiable student data. So educators should strive to earn credibility and legitimacy to maintain that trust. It is understandable for parents to have a ton of questions about their children's information and privacy. Like in regards to their children's data, what data is being collected about their child? Who has access to this data? How is the school working with companies to make sure that information is being protected? In terms of technologies being used, what apps and tools are their children using? What was the vetting process like to make sure these tools were safe to use? Moving to security, what training has school staff had to make? Moving to security, what training has school staff had to make sure these tools are appropriately used? Parents may also have questions about their rights. Is there any data collection they can opt out of? What if they wanna see what information is being collected? And finally, parents will have questions on how they can learn more. Is there a list of tools being used on the school website? Who can they reach out to if they have questions about the tools being used? In responding to parents' questions, it's incredibly important to communicate the benefits of using technologies. Focus on showing specific examples of the benefits of using student data to accurately assess student engagement, performance, and progress. So for example, if you're using student data to identify skill gaps or promising practices, share with parents how you follow through on your, on your learnings to help their child. If you use a student data system to adjust the pacing or level of difficulty of your lessons, communicate how the systems informed your instructional choices. Other key messages include explaining how student data is protected. Discuss your school and district's policies, procedures, and values. Also discuss that there are federal laws, specifically FERPA and COPPA, and state laws that protect students' privacy and have repercussions if not followed. Discuss who will have access to their child's data, which should only be individuals who work for the school and district who need to access that data in order to carry out their job's responsibilities. Other key messages include articulating what data is collected and why. Data is used to determine eligibility for services and to personalize lesson plans. Types of data collected include grades, attendance, demographics, scores on tests and assignments, and more. Also communicate that again, there are strict penalties under law if student information is misused or compromised. And finally, getting back to communicating those benefits, a key message is how information collected about their, child, their child's learning helps to enhance their educational experience to ensure student success. Consider your methods of communicating these messages and how parents can ask questions. Methods of communication can include weekly emails, newsletters, back to school letters that give a list of tools that will be used that semester or year, parent tech talks that discuss how to use new tools and allow an opportunity for families to ask questions. 
Your district may have approved an app where you can communicate with parents and families. And an engaging idea that should be implemented by your school is to host parent-teacher discussions through the school's social media accounts. Note that this is best done with the school's official account versus personal teacher social media accounts. Here are best practices to communicating with parents. First, provide general updates on a consistent, predictable basis. Determine the most effective and inclusive communication tool and a frequency that works best for you and parents. Be reasonable, let parents know what to expect and follow through. Next, invite feedback. Make sure there is an accessible way for families to ask questions. Encourage parent involvement and engagement by making them feel heard and respected. Both you and parents have incredibly busy schedules and parents may not be able to carve out the time they need to ask all the questions they really want. So schedule periodic check-ins to make sure any questions or concerns are addressed. And finally, consider equity concerns. If some parents don't have access to the main communication tool being used, ensure there's communication across multiple channels to reach every parent. Consider finding translation features for non or limited English speaking parents. To end this module, we'd like you to complete an activity. Pretend that a parent emails you asking why their child can't opt out of an ed tech tool that you are using with your students. Assume that allowing them to opt out would require you to develop entirely different lesson plans for that one student throughout the year. How do you respectfully reply in a way that builds trust and transparency? Write a short response. And if you need help getting started, here are some potential sentiments to include. Finally, one last question to reflect on. How in your current role can you grow student and parent trust and be more transparent? Thank you for joining this training.